In mathematics, operator theory is the study of linear operators on function spaces, beginning with differential operators and integral operators. The operators may be presented abstractly by their characteristics, such as bounded linear operators or closed operators, and consideration may be given to nonlinear operators. The study, which depends heavily on the topology of function spaces, is a branch of functional analysis. If a collection of operators forms an algebra over a field, then it is an operator algebra. The description of operator algebras is part of operator theory. <laughs> Single operator theory Single operator theory deals with the properties and classification of operators, considered one at a time. For example, the classification of normal operators in terms of their spectra falls into this category. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Spectrum of operators. The spectral theorem is any of a number of results about linear operators or about matrices. In broad terms the spectral theorem provides conditions under which an operator or a matrix can be diagonalized that is, represented as a diagonal matrix in some basis. This concept of diagonalization is relatively straightforward for operators on finite dimensional spaces, but requires some modification for operators on infinite dimensional spaces. In general, the spectral theorem identifies a class of linear operators that can be modeled by multiplication operators, which are as simple as one can hope to find. In more abstract language, the spectral theorem is a statement about commutative C** algebras. See also spectral theory for a historical perspective. Examples of operators to which the spectral theorem applies are self-adjoint operators or more generally normal operators on Hilbert spaces. The spectral theorem also provides a canonical decomposition, called the spectral decomposition, eigenvalue decomposition, or eigendecomposition, of the underlying vector space on which the operator acts. Normal operators A normal operator on a complex Hilbert space H is a continuous linear operator N, H H that commutes with its Hermitian adjoint N**, that is, N N** equals N**, N. Normal operators are important because the spectral theorem holds for them. Today, the class of normal operators is well understood. Examples of normal operators are Unitary operators, n** equals n-1 Hermitian operators i.e. self-adjoint operators, n**. Topic n also anti self adjoint operators n asterisk minus n positive operators n equals mm asterisk normal matrices can be seen as normal operators if one takes the hilbert space to be cn the spectral theorem extends to a more general class of matrices let A be an operator on a finite dimensional inner product space. A is said to be normal if A A. Topic: <laughs> AA asterisk. One can show that A is normal if and only if it is unitarily diagonalizable by the sure decomposition we have A Utu asterisk, where U is unitary and T upper triangular. 
Since A is normal, T T asterisk equals T asterisk T therefore, T must be diagonal since normal upper triangular matrices are diagonal. The converse is obvious. In other words, A is normal if and only if there exists a unitary matrix U such that A equals U D U display style A equals U D caret asterisk, where D is a diagonal matrix. Then, the entries of the diagonal of D are the eigenvalues of A the column vectors of U are the eigenvectors of A and they are orthonormal. Unlike the Hermitian case, the entries of D need not be real. <laughs> Polar decomposition The polar decomposition of any bounded linear operator A between complex Hilbert spaces is a canonical factorization as the product of a partial isometry and a non negative operator. The polar decomposition for matrices generalizes as follows If A is a bounded linear operator, then there is a unique factorization of A as a product A equals up where U is a partial isometry. P is a non-negative self-adjoint operator and the initial space of U is the closure of the range of P The operator U must be weakened to a partial isometry, rather than unitary, because of the following issues. If A is the one-sided shift on L2 N, then, A I, so if A equals U, A, U must be A, which is not unitary. The existence of a polar decomposition is a consequence of Douglas' lemma Lemma if A, B are bounded operators on a Hilbert space H, and A asterisk A B asterisk B, then there exists a contraction C such that A C B. Furthermore, C is unique if Ker B asterisk Ker C, the operator C can be defined by C B H. R, extended by continuity to the closure of Ran B, and by zero on the orthogonal complement of Ran B. The operator C is well defined since A asterisk A B asterisk B implies Ker B Ker A. The lemma then follows. In particular, if A asterisk A equals B asterisk B, then C is a partial isometry, which is unique if Ker B asterisk Ker C. In general, for any bounded operator A, A equals a a 1 2 a a 1 2 display style a caret asterisk a equals a caret asterisk a caret frac 1 2 a caret asterisk a caret frac 1 2 where a asterisk a one half is the unique positive square root of a asterisk a given by the usual functional calculus. So by the lemma, we have a equals u a a one two Display style a equals u a caret asterisk a caret frac one two for some partial isometry u, which is unique if ker a ker u note ker a equals ker a asterisk a equals ker b equals ker b asterisk where b equals b asterisk equals a asterisk a one half take p to be a asterisk a one half and one obtains the polar decomposition a topic 
up notice that an analogous argument can be used to show a pu where p is positive and u a partial isometry when h is finite dimensional u can be extended to a unitary operator this is not true in general see example above Alternatively, the polar decomposition can be shown using the operator version of singular value decomposition. By property of the continuous functional calculus, A, is in the C** algebra generated by A. A similar but weaker statement holds for the partial isometry, the polar part U is in the von Neumann algebra generated by A. If A is invertible, U will be in the C** algebra generated by A as well. Connection with complex analysis Many operators that are studied are operators on Hilbert spaces of holomorphic functions, and the study of the operator is intimately linked to questions in function theory. For example, Berling's theorem describes the invariant subspaces of the unilateral shift in terms of inner functions which are bounded holomorphic functions on the unit disk with unimodular boundary values almost everywhere on the circle. Berling interpreted the unilateral shift as multiplication by the independent variable on the Hardy space. The success in Studying multiplication operators, and more generally Turplitz operators which are multiplication, followed by projection onto the Hardy space has inspired the study of similar questions on other spaces, such as the Bergman space. <laughs> Operator algebras The theory of operator algebras brings algebras of operators such as C** algebras to the fore. Topic: C** algebras. A C** algebra A is a Banach algebra over the field of complex numbers, together with a map asterisk a, a one writes x asterisk for the image of an element x of A. The map asterisk has the following properties: it is an involution for every x in A. X equals x equals x display style x caret asterisk asterisk equals x caret asterisk caret asterisk equals x for all x y in a x plus y equals x plus y Display style x plus y carrot asterisk equals x carrot asterisk plus y carrot asterisk x y equals y x display style x y carrot asterisk equals y carrot asterisk x carrot asterisk for every lambda in C and every x in A, lambda x equals lambda x. Display style lambda x caret asterisk equals overline lambda x caret asterisk. For all x in A, x x equals x x display style x caret asterisk x equals x x caret asterisk remark the first three identities say that a is a asterisk algebra 
The last identity is called the C asterisk identity and is equivalent to X X equals X two Display style x x carrot asterisk equals x carrot two. The C asterisk identity is a very strong requirement. For instance, together with the spectral radius formula, it implies that the C asterisk norm is uniquely determined by the algebraic structure x two equals x x equals sup lambda x x minus lambda 1 is not invertible Display style x carrot two equals x carrot asterisk x equals sub lambda x carrot asterisk x lambda one text is not invertible. Topic See also Invariant subspace Functional calculus Spectral theory Resolvent formalism Compact operator Fredholm theory of integral equations Integral operator Fredholm operator Self-adjoint operator Unbounded operator Differential operator Umbral calculus Contraction mapping Positive operator on a Hilbert space Non-negative operator on a partially ordered vector space <laughs>